What's going on, everybody? This is Dom Dominicus. You guys might know me as Dirty Dom. Feeling a little clean today. Today, I'm going to be giving you guys a big breakdown, a big breakdown of my business, all the success I had over the last two years, all the business success. Hopefully, you can learn something from me. Um, this is not financial advice. It's just my advice, my personal experience of all the business things that I've been through, all the life things that I've been through, and maybe you can take some of it and use it to earn yourself some good money, or um, you can stay lazy, but here we go. We're going to go through it, all right? So a little bit of background about me. I've been in the YouTube game for about eight years now, since 2015. I've been making videos long before that as a wee little lad, but 2015 was when I moved to LA. Started making content. Um, was part of another big group called the Vlog Squad as well. Um, that definitely helped me out, get my notoriety out there, get my YouTube cloud up. Being an influencer, I didn't really have too much business knowledge. I knew how to make videos. And even making videos, I wasn't the best at making them. <laughs> I could have made them a little bit better. Um, but I learned a lot through my, through my years in YouTube. I learned a lot through my years uh, in doing business. And I kind of mashed the two worlds together. I was able to take what I learned in social media and then what I learned in business and put it together to make this beautiful little alien baby. <laughs> All right. So I'll give you guys a little bit of breakdown over the last two years. Uh, 2021 was really successful year. 2020 also was a pretty good year for me as well. Um, for a lot of people, the pandemic happened, you know, so a lot of people were at home. But for me, I was at home and I, uh, I got down to the hustle. I got down to the grind. All right. Best time is now. OK, so. Basically, as the pandemic rolled around, I saw an opportunity to, you know, kind of move away from social media and move on to actually making more money online. Because like I mentioned, being an influencer, it's, it's a little bit difficult to make money. So you kind of have to get um, creative with it, if that makes sense. So the first thing, the first thing that uh, was really a success for us was marketing other uh, companies, right? So being a digital marketing agency, right? Some of the first successes that we had, oh, there we go. Who is this for? Well, let's go back. How did I get started? There we go. So um, some of the first businesses that we started was marketing on meme pages, right? So meme pages are like Instagram pages that you know people post memes on. Pretty pretty simple, right? Uh, we started doing marketing for other companies on there, cannabis companies, uh, a lot of cannabis companies, right? And then also a lot of uh, models, like OnlyFans models. You know, OnlyFans was really popping off during the pandemic, so um, we kind of found a pocket, especially with the cannabis companies, because you can't run advertisements right and for the models as well because uh, girls are always trying to get more followers more subscribers so what better way than to utilize platforms to get them those subscribers and followers you know um, obviously TikTok is huge nowadays to push stuff like that but even then with the bands and shit going around it's a little bit harder to make movement like that so our agency got a really big start in the beginning of it was promoting these two types of offers, a lot of models, a lot of cannabis offers, some supplements, brands here and there, because supplements, again, you can't really promote online that you're going to be able to give results to people or change their lives, whatever it is. So a lot of kind of like black hat gray area marketing. Um, that's where we found success, right? We found this like niche and we really went deep into it, right? We were able to get a lot of clients. I think at one point we had maybe like, fuck, I'd say like 10 to 15 clients every single month. We were bringing in, you know, um, probably close to half a million dollars through all the clients that we had. Obviously that wasn't all money into my pocket. I had partners, I had to pay the, um, the, the clients, right. You know, so it wasn't, it wasn't all profit, but at the end of the year, gross revenue, we ended up doing a little bit over $8 million in 2021. Right. So pretty successful year. We did a, we, we did a good amount of work. We made a lot of people rich. We made ourselves rich too, you know, of course. So, um, that was the greatest, that was the greatest thing about it, you know? Um, then start of like 2022, um, you know, we were kind of at the point of like, we can either keep growing other people's businesses or from everything that we learned, we can start our own businesses. You know, I think there's a, there's a part of me that I, I wanted to stay working for clients because it is kind of, you know, if, if you can deliver good results, you can get a lot of people to join, you know, to sign up with you and you can make them a lot of money. You can make yourself a lot of money too. Um, but at the end of the day, I always wanted to be my own boss. And I felt like if I'm working for someone else doing a service, I'm not really growing my own business. I don't have ownership of anything that I'm growing for these people. It's their businesses and we're basically blowing them up. You know, marketing nowadays is one of the most important things for businesses, right? I just didn't know too much of the back end stuff, right? So over the course of kind of this year, I really started earning the, learning the back end of um, e-commerce businesses, 
Um, not really, not really like service-based businesses, but I'd say definitely more online sales businesses, right? Um, that's what we started focusing on. You know, that, that was our major focus because we knew everything about marketing, how to blow stuff up, how to post it on meme pages, how to run ads. But what we didn't know was like, how do we actually set up the stores and how do we build funnels and how do we collect emails and how do we have better CRO on our landing pages, all the nerdy nitty gritty stuff, right? So in this presentation, I'm going to be going over all that nerdy, uh, background stuff as well as also the marketing aspect of stuff. Okay. So who is this for? Who is this for? Chat, let's see. Let's see who we got in here right now. Rock and roll. Popping. Popping, popping, popping. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, cool. If you guys are watching this live, appreciate it. If you have any questions, let me know below. If um, you're seeing this as it's been posted, go ahead and drop a comment in the comment section. I'll be answering anyone's questions, okay? So if you have any questions, just let me know. And let's keep it rolling okay so who is this for so if you if you're looking to make money online right if you are um <laughs> you know trying trying to do something with your life trying to elevate your life of course this is for you if you're looking for a cheap way you know a shortcut way something that's not going to take long a get rich quick scheme honestly this video is not for you um this has been you know the last five years of my life learning this stuff and i'm still not at the point that i want to be at i'm making this you know, video so that I can hopefully inspire some of you guys out there. Hopefully I can teach some of you guys out there from the mistakes that I made in my personal life and my business life to help you. So you don't have to make the same mistakes. And, you know, you can kind of see me as like, you know, you kind of, you're, you're your mentor, mentor Dom, mentor Dominique is over here. So, um, this is not for people that are going to be lazy. This is not for people that are going to give up after the first failure, because trust me, there's been plenty of times that we failed and we're still failing every single day. I probably have 10 failures every single day and there's shit that I don't like how it goes and I get pissed off, but I try not to get too pissed off, you know? So, um, <laughs> it's all just about managing your expectations and also, um, knowing that nothing, nothing that's going to be great is going to come fast. You know what I'm saying? If you're looking for get rich quick schemes, I'm sorry to say it, but there is no get rich quick schemes, you know? Um, there's definitely schemes that can make you a lot of money, but they don't last forever, right? I have a lot of friends that did crypto projects that pumped and dumped crypto coins. Sure, they made a lot of money, but now they're kind of in the place of crypto's down, nobody's pumping NFT projects. They don't know what to do next, you know what I'm saying? So there's definitely there's definitely little hustles, little hustles, you know, every there's they last six to 12 months that you can find that'll make you a lot of money. Long-term, are they good? Are they gonna have you build something up? Are they gonna have you um, have some type of future endeavors? Probably not. Right. But if you're looking to make quick money, there's definitely those ways out there, but this is for people that actually want to elevate their lives, you know, and build long-term skills. Okay. So what are we, what are we going to be covering in this? This is going to be particularly for, uh, e-commerce or online businesses, right? Service-based businesses. I guess you can use some of this stuff inside of, um, and inside inside of what you're doing, right? But this is more so for e-commerce businesses, just because this is what I know. I don't, I don't want to talk about stuff that I don't really have a, too much of a passion for or know too much about. So I'm going to be talking about what I know, okay? But of course, feel free to take this knowledge and put it towards whatever businesses you want, okay? So I broke this up into a few different sections, right? Um, there's operations, marketing, branding, customer service, executive assistance, influencer relations, and engineering okay so these are the different sectors that i kind of broke this video into um i'll have timestamps at the bottom as well so if you want to skip through and see different ones you can check that out um but this is kind of how i organized my business right um everyone has their own different way of doing it there's probably people that have you know different types of strategies different types of methods for what works for them but this is what works for me okay so check it out Number one, we're going to start at operations. So what's operations? Operations is the overall overseeing of the business, right? So usually when you're starting it off, like right now, I'm kind of the operations lead. I have a partner. Uh, me and him are both the operations lead. We kind of look over everything. You know, you're probably if you're doing this and you're just starting off, you're the owner, you're the CEO of the company, right? Um, you're kind of going to be doing a lot of the day-to-day -day operations, okay? Dom is elevating with us. What's up, Miller? Appreciate it, man. That's right. That's right. Okay. So, um, most of the time you're going to end up being that person. You know what I'm saying? If you're just starting out your business and you don't have employees or you don't have people to work for you, you're going to be doing probably all of these things that I mentioned here. But first off, you're going to start with operations. So what does operations includes? Includes hiring and firing people. Okay. Freelancers. Most of the people we use as freelancers. We don't really have any employees. We don't have any, 
um, people that are coming in and that, that are working here. Everyone is working online. That's the beauty of an online business. Everyone can usually work from home, which is nice, right? Maybe I'll be making a video a year from now where I'll have an office and I'll have a bunch of employees and this will be a completely different idea. But for now, this is how we started and I, and I, I, and I recommend this is how most people start because you're not gonna have an, an office full of people, right? You're gonna be able to hire contractors, freelancers, right? Two places that I like to hire people from, Fiverr and Upwork, okay? Two websites that are amazing. Uh, Upwork is a little bit more quality people, I like to say. There's also some less expensive people. It just kind of depends how you look. But from what I've seen, Upwork has a little bit more quality hires. Fiverr has a lot of good hires too, but you have to look through a good amount of people, I would say. So both these websites are really good. These are honestly the two websites that helped us make that $8 million last year just from hiring from there. So um, go ahead and definitely use those. Learn the interface. Click through the websites. There's literally sections for everything. If you want to get a, a teacup made, if you want to source a clothing factory from China, if you want to get a website made, it has all those things, okay? Company payouts, you know, usually you're going to have to be in charge of the finances if you're in operations, right? Paying out people, paying out um, freelancers, right? Paying bills, you know, anything, anything that goes into the finance category, mainly if you're the decision maker, you're going to have the credit card, you're going to be going and paying stuff, right? Overseeing other departments, okay? So all these other de departments that I'm going to mention, probably if you're just starting out, you're going to have to have your hands in a little bit of everything. But as you get more ex uh, accelerated, as you get more higher up, as you get more money, as you can hire more people, your tasks are going to become less and less hands-on. You're just going to be more so overseeing people. That's the point that we're at now. You know, we have a project manager. We talk to him. He kind of oversees those other things, and then we kind of oversee him, right? Brand vision, you know, long-term vision of the brand. What is your company? What are you trying to do in the next two, three years? What are you trying to do in the next 10 years, right? Where are you trying to take it? What kind of aesthetic, what kind of branding, what kind of imagery is on the website, you know? This is kind of in the in the branding aspect too, but usually as the owner, you know, I, I see myself kind of being the pioneer, the visionary for where I want the brand to go and how I want it to be in the future. Problem solving. It's like stuff like payment processor issues. Like we've been having issues with that this whole month. Sending out contracts, dealing with wholesale suppliers, you know, creating the LLC formation, basically anything like basic business stuff to complex stuff of like, you know, doing credit card payments and processing and stuff like that. Usually whoever's running the operations is going to have to deal with that day to day stuff. And it does get a little bit hectic. It does get a little bit annoying. So usually that, that's why it's better to have a select team for operations because, you know, 20 little things in a day that take 10 minutes end up taking a lot of your time. Right. So even if it seems like it's minuscule and it's small things, it's going to end up taking a while. OK. Giving approvals, disapprovals. This is where we're at now. You know, our team sends us graphics and we'll say, yes, we like this design. Change this, change that. No, we don't like this. OK, let's keep that. Let's move this here. Right. We're basically decision makers as the operations lead. We're decision makers. We're telling people, here's the decisions that we like. Here's the things that we don't like. Here's the things that we need fixed. Right. New products and services, right? So you can either hire a project manager, a product manager, excuse me, to do these things. Or like I said, if you're just starting off, you're gonna be probably doing it yourself. At this point, we're still kind of doing it ourselves. We're launching all the new products ourselves, coming up with the new ideas ourselves. Networking, relationship building, investors, key players. Again, this just goes back to the big overall picture of the brand, you know, really just being able to build relationships. Whoever's in your operations department, right? If it's you, again, I would definitely suggest building your social skills, your relationship building skills, being able to talk to people. You know, um, there's a lot of successful introverts out there, but they usually have partners that are more extroverted and are more chatty and like to talk to people. If you can have both, which is very rare, but if you can have both, if you have your introverted personality and your extroverted personality and lock them together, then you're going to be in a very, very, very good space. You know, sales. Again, it just comes, everything is sales. You know what I'm saying? If you're pitching to new investors, if you're pitching to, um, you know, get that girl to like you, if, if you're pitching to, uh, uh, to try to convince <laughs> your roommates where to go eat, you know, everything comes down to sales, right? So being good at sales, this is just more so an overall general thing that you should be good at. But if you're selling your company, if you're pitching your vision, if you're trying to get investors to believe in you, you're going to need to be good at sales, okay? Communicating with assistants and project managers. Again, if you're in the operations standpoint, you're going to need to be doing a lot of communications with all of the lower tier people in your staff, in your community, communicating with people. That's kind of, again, where our roles are now is in mainly communicating. We do still have our hands in a little bit of the other uh, sections that we're going to go into, 
but a majority of it is is communicating with people now you know CRO a B testing so this is just something I added on here because we were doing it this week conversion rate optimization you know checking seeing what kind of website pages are doing better how's the website speed is, is it loading loading faster right a lot of uh, just a lot of like nerdy little technical shit you know what I'm saying technically the engineer could be dealing with this but again something really good I would make sure Dom is hydrated yeah man water is is the key essential to life exactly man <laughs> Might, I might need to grab some water here in a second. Okay, so that basically covers operations, right? You as the owner, you as a CEO, you're gonna be the one dealing with most of the operations, right? So this is kind of the bucket that you're mainly gonna be in is just kind of the grand wizard and having everything that that is that is on your shoulders, you know, to deal with, okay? Next is marketing. So there's a lot of great businesses out there that look great, that have awesome landing pages, that have a great team, that have great culture, but they don't know how to go viral. They don't know anything about marketing. They don't know what the youth likes. They don't know what Gen Z likes. They don't even have a fucking TikTok account. That's horrible, okay? Marketing, this is, I, I put this right after operations because this and operations is damn near the two most important things. If you throw everything else out the window, my personal philosophy is, sure, you can have the coolest landing pages, you can have you can have the most up-to-date, you know, fucking by the books, accountants and everything like this, but if you don't know how to market, if you don't know how to get people to your website, if you don't know how to generate attention, your business is gonna fall flat on the fucking ground, okay? Just to be honest. So marketing, promotional channels and methods to grow your business. Okay, so this is just a bunch of different promotional channels that we use ourselves. I'm gonna go through them right now. Um, I can make more in-depth videos on these in the future, but this is just kind of a broad um, generalization of some tactics that you can use. By far, TikTok ads, TikTok marketing, it's the biggest platform right now. You gotta utilize it, you know? I don't know how long uh, TikTok ads is gonna, be, is gonna be this, you know, great for, and it's already becoming a little bit oversaturated, just CPMs are going up, you know, the more people get on the advertising platforms, the higher it's gonna be, the more expensive it's gonna be, right? So um, get on it while you can. TikTok is definitely great. And also the TikTok types of videos that you're making. You know, I'm not, I'm not just talking about knowing the ads platform because you can know the ads platform. You can know how to run the best ads and the best and the best tactics and the best techniques. But guess what? If your actual content is not good, then it's not going to matter how well you know the platform, right? So more so than TikTok ads, you got to know how to make TikToks, okay? Fuck the ads. You can hire someone. We hire people to run our TikTok ads. You know what I'm saying? But the creatives, you know, most of the time we're making ourselves, right? Or we're hiring UGC creators. We'll get into that later, right? So know how to make the content. That's going to be first important thing. And then second of all, learn the ad platforms or hire someone to run the ad platforms for you that knows all the sauce, knows all the secrets, knows all the optimization keys, right? Hire someone to do that. Okay. Next is Facebook ads, Facebook, Instagram ads. Um, again, it's, it's just another another staple ads platform, right? It depends what kind of stuff you're running for. Sometimes TikTok ads, those TikTok short video funny ads, meme ads, they don't really work that great on Instagram and Facebook, you know? For example, if you're promoting a luxury company, a luxury handbag company, you probably don't want to run an ad that's like a TikTok that's like all like cheesy and girly and looks like it's a, it's a $30 handbag, right? You probably want to run nice, you know, high quality videos, you know, very crispy photos as ads, right? Just because it's a different brand, it's a different tactic. But again, you don't know anything until you test it. I could tell you, hey, this is what I think you should do. But until you test it, you don't know. With marketing, that's all it is. It's testing because I could think I have the best fucking idea, the best marketing strategy ever, and it flops. It's happened multiple times. I thought I had the best idea, the best, the, the best, funniest, fucking quirkiest video for an ad, and it just, it's dead on arrival, right? And then there was other times where I had videos where I'm like, you know, this is, this is kind of a cool ad, I guess, but it's not like, you know, it's not super viral. It's not super amazing. But guess what? It ended up going crazy. It ended up popping off. It ended up going super viral, right? So again, marketing, all it is, it's just testing. A, B, T. Always be testing, okay? So always, 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 always be testing your sets out, okay? That's the only way you can get better. Always be testing, okay? Snapchat ads, same type of format as usually as TikTok ads. Email marketing, okay? Email marketing, we use Klaviyo right now. Um, for our company, Gassy, 
our cannabis online cannabis company, we're probably doing like 15, 20 K just from email marketing. And that's what felt like an email list of maybe we have 60,000 people in there, but we're not targeting all of them. We're segmenting into more engaged shoppers. So I'd say maybe for like 20,000 people, you know what I'm saying? So that's almost a dollar per person. It's pretty good, right? Email marketing. A lot of people hate on it. I used to think, dude, emails, who the fuck opens emails? Only boomers will open emails. Boy, was I wrong. When we started making 20 G's a month just from doing emails, I was like, wow, this shit actually works. I was the boomer. <laughs> so it obviously depends on your targeting, depends on your mailing list, but email marketing, very powerful. SMS marketing, this just stands for um, something, something marketing. <laughs> no, it's text marketing, okay? So sending text messages to people, right? Chances are, you know, people check their emails time and time again, but someone's phone, they're constantly on their phone. So they're going to get a, a, a text message directly right to them, right? So it's amazing. It's really good. Okay. And open rates are way higher on SMS marketing than email marketing. Okay. Meme pages, right? This is our bread and butter. This is what really, uh, all of these, all of these top, uh, TikTok ads, Facebook ads, Snapchat ads, for the cannabis company, we weren't able to run ads for these, you know what I'm saying? So that's the only bad thing. You have to use uh, more legitimate brands, legitimate meaning white hat brands, brands that aren't selling illicit products, right? Those are great for those, but um, unfortunately, meme pages, you know, that's where you can run a little bit more black hat offers, you know what I'm saying? Because there's less filtering, okay? So meme pages really good for, you know, stuff that you can't normally pass through normal ads platforms, whether that's promoting you know, sex, like OnlyFans, whether well, that's promoting cannabis, whether well, that's promoting some weight loss pills, you know, uh, any type of thing in that realm, tobacco products, right? Vapes, whatever it is, meme pages are great for that, okay? The way that you do this is, you know, the, the probably the easiest way to do it is just to DM these pages. Find the meme pages that you like, DM them, negotiate, and go through rates for them, right? You have to be good at negotiation. Be good at sales, right? Sales, people, sales. It all comes down to it, you know? You don't want to be overpaying for a page that doesn't have good engagement, okay? Chat bot, chat bot automation, Manny Chat. Okay, so this is great. We actually have this on a few of our websites. Um, we're using Manny Chat right now to, uh, to talk to customers and to send them down funnels. So, for example, somebody comes on your site, they want to track your order. Instead of someone have to pick up the phone and talk to them every single time, can I track my order? Can I track my order? Can I track my order? You can put a message bot on your website, okay? The message bot, what, what it's going to do, it's going to go and give them some options. Hey there, sir, would you like to track your order? You know, you can give them the most uh, basic uh, uh, FAQs. You know what I'm saying? Would you like to track your order? Would you like to follow up on a missing package? Or would you like to uh, speak to a representative, right? You give them a few different options. That way, you lower the amount of time and the amount of people that actually have to be answering redundant questions where automation can do it for you, right? Computers, baby. Technology. We have it. Use it, okay? So the more you can automate your business, the better. That's kind of even the process that we're in now is just automating it more and more and more. You know, the more we can have computers and technology do our work for us, the faster we can be on the beach sipping mojitos, getting some big booty Brazilians, all right? So UGC affiliates. So what UGC stands for is user generated content. To put that in a nutshell, what that means, it's just videos that users create, you know, any TikTok video that you see an influencer get a product and they make a video about it, that's use GC. That, that's all that it means. It's just content that's created by content creators. Okay. So a good way to do this, we actually do it. We do affiliate deals. So we give the content creators a link. We tell them, Hey, drive traffic to this link, promote our products. We'll give you a percentage, right? The percentage that you give to them is up to you. Most companies give 15 to 20% uh, affiliate rates. We give 50%. We give a lot, a lot. We give a lot. Most companies don't give 50%. We're basically giving half of our profit to the people for bringing them in. Why do we do that? Because we're sexy as fuck. That's why. No, we do it because we want to incentivize people more, right? The more we can incentivize them, the more we can make them feel like, okay, I actually want to work for this shit. I actually want to make money with this company. The better it is. You know what I'm saying? Fuck it, you can give them 80%. If your business model is set up like that, especially if it's like an online product that has no overhead, you know, if it's a digital product, fuck, you can give them 75% for bringing affiliates there, you know, because there's no overhead cost for you, right? This is just what we see in work with us. And for right now, 50-50 works, who knows? As our business grows, we might do less. We might cut it to 30%, right? It just depends on where you're scaling your company is. But if you're under 100K a month, I would say definitely do, you know, 50-50% affiliates, make people feel 
interested in your products, okay? Black hat methods, okay? So these are a little bit more uh, advanced methods, but um, we can go through them. So fan pages, MS methods. MS stands for mother slave or mother child methods, right? What this means is that you have one main page and I'm actually doing this right now with my TikTok, right? So you have one main page. I have the Dominicus main page and then I have a bunch of like little satellite pages. You know, I have like five fan pages for me. What these five fan pages are doing is they're commenting, they're liking, they're interacting with people that I want to target. And on the slave pages in the bio, it says, go follow my main page, Dominicus, right? So the point is these fan pages are driving all this traction to the main page, to the mother page, right? And these are all bots, so this is all automated. You don't you don't have to actually have people sitting there and commenting and liking all day, right? Reddit upvote bots. You can post the Reddit up, you can post a Reddit thing, you can rank your post in the top of the Reddit forms, and you can have bots comment on it. It builds social proof, it makes your business look legit. You know, again, it's a black hat method. So if you're if you're out there worried about getting banned on Reddit or whatever it is, don't try this shit. If you're a pussy, but if you want to make money. It's a good method, okay? IG automation, again, commenting, doing mass DMs, right? There's a bunch of different uh, uh, bots out there. There's Jarvi, this is one of the simple ones. Um, I'm actually working on developing our own personal bot, but it's been taking a while. You know, these fucking bots, you know, it's just, technically it's not, it's not, everything's not by the rules, you know what I'm saying? So uh, it's for educational purposes only, folks, all right? We're building IG bots on, on Minecraft, never on real life, of course. So those are all cool ways to do it some cool techniques and you can definitely um, you can definitely do some bang for your buck but they are more hard because it's technically it's called black hat because you're kind of breaking the rules you're breaking the terms of service while doing these you know so use at your own discretion telegram whatsapp group chats um, yeah group chats you know if you're looking to get clients for your business this is more for service based businesses right find these group chats you can message people sell them a service on there um, there's also telegram whatsapp you know bots where you can send mass dms and shit like that so there's there's a bunch of different ways for that linkedin for b2b business yeah if, if, if your business is strictly business to business you can use linkedin to find a lot of business you know high ticket clients for e-commerce, for selling $20, $30 products, LinkedIn is probably not the best. But let's say I have you know, my cannabis company, I wanna find wholesalers for my cannabis company, I can go to LinkedIn to find those wholesalers on there, okay? Branding, what is branding? So branding is the vibe, the aesthetic, the first and lasting impressions of your brand, okay? So, for example, whenever I start a brand, what I like to do is I like to get inspiration from either competitors or other companies that are in the space doing similar stuff. And, you know, I, I like to get inspiration from their photos. You know what I'm saying? Everything from uh, the photos to the aesthetic. Um, let me see. Maybe I have more. Uh, okay. Okay. Perfect. 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 Okay. Um, yeah. Like the photos, the aesthetic, um, the mood boards. I'll talk about this in a second. Um, first, yeah, why do you why do you want to build a brand in the first place, right? So that, that's that's the question. Why not just drop ship items? Why not just, you know, take these fucking fake ear pods and sell them online and call them Dom pods? Okay. First thing is longevity. You know, obviously, building building a brand, you're gonna have actual longevity instead of just selling either somebody else's product, or instead of uh, selling some knockoff products, right? Nowadays, you know, if somebody sees your store and the product looks like a shitty product that's from AliExpress, chances are they're not going to buy, right? But you can take that same shitty headphones or same shitty item, right? And by making it a brand, by making it a, a, a nice landing page, by doing custom photography, by having a nice Instagram with some likes and followers on it, right? Now people think your product is legit. Now they're way more likely to buy it because it's an actual brand, right? It's not just some fucking shitty Chinese knockoff product. Even though the same shitty Chinese knockoff product could be a brand, right? It's just because brands are built, right? Great lasting products are built, right? You, you can take any type of fucking product and make it into a brand, right? It just depends how much time you want to put into it. There's a lot of products that are oversaturated, but if you take your time and building the community and building a good brand, you can make it, right? Great products, winning products, winning brands, they're built. They're not just found, right? So what makes a good brand? Here's some stickiness factors that we look for. Stickiness, all right? Get real sticky, all right? So return rate. 
Now these, now you don't need to have all of these, but from experience, this is kind of what we look for in finding products that are gonna be very successful, very sticky, very excellent, okay? Return rate, does a product have the ability to be bought multiple times or just once? For example, our, our edibles that we have, a lot of people, we have, we have a fucking a 35% you know, return rate, sometimes even 40% return rate. That means a lot of people are coming back and buying. You know what I'm saying? Most stores have maybe five, 10% return rate, right? And it just depends what the brand is, right? If you're selling $100 t-shirts, chances are people aren't gonna be coming back and buying $100 t-shirts every single you know, week, right? But if you're selling a $10, $20 consumable product, chances are people are gonna be coming back and, oh, I really like this product, I liked how it tastes, I like how it made me feel, I'm gonna come back and do it, right? Again, depends on the brand. You know, they could return maybe because you have a lot of SKUs, you have a lot of items on your store. Maybe they buy your one course, but now you have 20 other courses to sell, so they return and buy stuff. It's really just LTV, long-term customer value, right? And the return rate of people coming, okay? Logistics, okay? Logistics meaning shipping, right? For example, uh, one of our friends, Oliver, he has a brand of chocolates, okay? But they're not just regular chocolates, they're sex chocolates, which makes it interesting, right? He had a problem because in summertime, it gets hot, and guess what? Chocolate melts when it's hot. That's a fucking horrible logistics issue, you know what I'm saying? Also, is the product lightweight, easy to produce and fulfill? Because guess what? If it's heavy, it's going to cost a lot more to ship. It's going to crush your margins. Especially if you're drop shipping from China and your item weighs 50 pounds, you're not going to make any money because the shipping is going to be hundreds of dollars, right? So the lightweight, the lighter weight the product is, the more sticky it is, the more better it is, the more we like it, okay? Easy to produce, you know what I'm saying? Is it easy to package? Is it easy to put together? How many touch points is there in producing the package? You know what I'm saying? Like, for example, um, the factor that we have doing gummies, right? They have a few touch points. You know what I'm saying? They have the gummies, taking out the gummies, putting the gummies in the package, sealing the gummies up, putting the expiration sticker on it. That's already like six touch points right there, right? If you have products that have 20, 30 touch points, it's going to take a lot longer and it's going to be a lot more expensive to package those items up. Imagine if, you know, there's a, there's a, there's a utility line and there's like fucking 20 things that they have to do just to get your like one little item ready. It's going to, it's going to be a lot of work. It's going to raise the cost of it. You know, for some brands, if you can afford it, yes. But again, it's just the more simpler, the more easy people can make the products and get it ready to deliver and fulfill the better if it doesn't expire gets damaged easily again if the, you know candy is great because candy usually lasts a good time but if you're selling you know hamburger meat and we're shipping it out to people <laughs> i mean that's a fucking nightmare we have to have it refrigerated it's gonna go bad soon you know there's a lot of bad things that go with it right get damaged easily you know again if you're shipping glass and you don't have it protected and it breaks in the mail people are gonna be pissed off Hoodies, hoodies are good, right? I mean, t-shirts are good because hoodies kind of weigh a little bit more, so they're a little bit more expensive to ship. But we'll say, you know, t-shirts. T-shirts are easy to produce and fulfill. They don't have an expiration date. They're not going to get damaged unless fucking a tornado hits, <laughs> hits the USPS, right? Great, great item, right? Untapped marketing, okay? Untapped marketing, right? So all those, all those marketing channels that I listed there, those are all... The thing is, most companies, most companies aren't running ads for all of these. And there's more on this list. There's Pinterest ads. There's a bunch of other ads, right? Most companies are not running ads for all of these things. They're maybe just doing TikTok ads. Or maybe they're just doing Facebook ads. Or maybe they're just doing email marketing, SMS marketing, and they have a chat bot. Chances are most companies are not utilizing all platforms of marketing. They're not. Because they might kill it on Facebook ads and they make a million a month on Facebook ads. But... Uh, they kind of neglected email marketing or they neglect meme pages, right? But we're trying to make billions of fucking dollars, not millions. Get the fuck out of here if you're millions of dollars. I don't want that shit. I want to make billions, bro. So untapped marketing. Easy way to check for this, you know, is by looking at uh, the ads manager, right? So this is for Facebook and Instagram and TikTok, right? They have an ads manager. If you go online, if you go to Facebook right now, you can see there's a Facebook ads manager. You can see there's a TikTok ads manager. Ads library, okay? is what it's called. You can search the company's name on there and it'll show you the ads that they're currently running, okay? It'll show you the ads that they're running. So you can also get inspiration, see what's working for this company, see what types of ads you might wanna run, you know? One way that we check if a brand is too competitive, we look at all the competitors and we look at the ads that they're running. 
okay? Let's say there's five competitors. We're starting, we're starting a lemon lime company and there's five competitors, right? We go online, we look at the lemon limes, okay? How many of these companies are running ads? How many ads are they running per month? Because we've seen it too when there's companies that are doing great, you know, I, I give you to perspective, there's a company that makes $50 million a month, right? Huge company. We checked their Facebook ads library and they're running eight, they've, they've ran eight creatives that month. Eight creatives. They've tested, this company's making $50 million a month and they've tested eight creatives. For a company that size, they should be testing 800 creatives, not eight creatives, right? So even the big behemoth companies that you think are killing it and doing great, even they have pieces in their, pieces in their puzzle that they're slacking on, right? They might be killing it on retail, but they have no fucking idea how to kill TikTok. They have no idea how to kill Facebook, right? And most of these older companies are like that. It's a bunch of old heads that have distribution in Walmart and Target, and they're killing it, of course. Great for them. They're awesome. But imagine how much more awesome they could be if they were on killing it on TikTok, on Facebook, right? So study your competitors on there. That'll give you a good, that'll give you a good understanding of who's doing well and who's running ads. And again, like I said, chances are they might be running TikTok ads but they're not gonna be running Facebook and Snapchat and email marketing. Or they might be killing it with their email marketing ads. They have a great, beautifully designed email list and, and they kill it with SMS marketing, but they don't know anything about getting UGC affiliates. They don't know anything about TikTok ads, right? I, I, I Really, I haven't seen too many companies that have everything down packed, right? I don't really see it. You know, Most of them are really just good at one vertical and that's about it. And they max out that vertical and they're like, oh, we spend, uh, you know, we, we capped TikTok ads. What do we do now? How do we grow? They're missing all, like most of these email targeting, you know, most of these, most of these tactics, right? So again, try out different shit, okay? Niche segmentation. Another, another thing that's going to make your product sticky is instead of making the product for the whole world, Competing with the whole world, 10 billion people, how, fucking 15 billion people, however many people there is, find a niche audience for your product, okay? Nectar hard seltzer. It's a hard seltzer, you know, there's Trulies, there's White Claws, there's fucking Happy Dads, right? They targeted a certain demographic. They targeted the Asian demographic, right? You see with their flavors, Asian pear, uh, passion fruit, orange guava, <laughs> not for kids, okay? Uh, mandarin, lychee, Asian pear, Yuvu, Yuzu, right? They took a product that's already out there, hard seltzers, and they made it for the Asian demographic, okay? So finding niches, finding little pockets of where to, where to take your brand, where to put your products out there, okay? Make sure, make sure you kind of find a pocket to sit in, you know? Sometimes it's good to go broad. Sometimes it's good to, could to you know, make your products to the broadest audience as possible especially maybe when you're first starting out, but also it's good to hit a niche because guess what? If you can hit a niche that, you know, is maybe less competitive than the overall big demographic, you're going to make a lot of money. Okay. So again, all those, all those factors, you don't need to have all of them for a product, but those are just some stickiness factors that we like to have for our products because we know that if we can hit, you know, three out of four of these, we're gonna be doing really well, right? Even if we can hit two of these, even if we just have, there's a product that there's not really, there's untapped marketing, there's room to, be, to market it, and the product is has really good logistics, right? Or we know that customers are gonna return every week to buy this product, and it's in a specific niche, right? If we can have at least two out of these four, and there's probably a few more stickiness factors, these are just the kind of ones that I came up with that we really like, so. Take it, take it into consideration, okay? So branding, here's what we've done. Finding inspiration on Instagram, right? So going through Instagram, finding inspiration, finding uh, you know images that we like. I literally have folders for all the different brands that I have. So whenever I find something, I'm like, yo, this would be kind of cool for my clothing brand. I'm like, hey, this would be kind of cool for our, uh, our gummy brand. Hey, this would be kind of cool for our uh, weed brand. You know what I'm saying? Like there's different inspiration folders that I have. That's a really good way to find stuff, you know? Again, if you're starting off your company, you're probably gonna be the person that's gonna be finding these aesthetics, finding these styles, okay? Mood boards, okay? So again, when you're putting together your, your brand, when you're starting from scratch, right? If you wanna have a good brand, if you wanna have a good aesthetic, you have to really be nerdy about it, right? So for me, what I like to do is I like to make mood boards or stylescapes, right? So in a sense, what that means is the fonts, the aesthetic, 
the imagery on there, right? All these different things play into what the website's gonna feel like, right? For this, uh, for a clothing brand that we have coming up very soon, I'm gonna be showing you guys this, right? What I did was I made like a style guide for the graphic designer that made the landing page, that made the UX UI design, right? So I gave him the exact fonts that I wanted. I gave him the exact, uh, you know, the logo I got made ahead of time. So I gave him the logo. I gave him aesthetics of five different brands. I said, hey, I want it to be this grungy, like, you know, dark, gothic, emo, slightly, you know, anti-authority type of vibe. Imagery, here's some imagery, here's some photos that I want on there. I like this types of videos. Let's include this type of video in there, okay? The more that you can give to the branding people, the better, because the worst thing as a creative, a client coming to me is saying, oh yeah, just make something dope, okay? Just make something dope doesn't mean shit. Make something dope could, could mean 20 different fucking things, right? So the more, uh, the more you can express your vision exactly how you want something, the better it's gonna turn out, right? Especially when you're working with creative people. You know what I'm saying? 3D renders, right? So digital assets. We like to do this for our companies because it's one of the easiest ways to actually get your product off the ground without having anything physical. What I mean is this, there's a gold little nugget right here. So don't tell anyone. Um, for example, when we're starting a company out, right? Instead of taking photography of the product or instead of even getting the product made, like let's say I wanna do these sick ass iPhone cases, right? Instead of having the mold made in China and then I need to order 500 cases and it's gonna end up costing me $5,000, right? That's a lot of fucking money, it's a lot of time. What I'll do is I'll get someone to make 3D renders of the product, right? Before we actually get the physical product just to get an idea, right? Just to see if people enjoy it, right? You can get 3D videos, you can get, you know, 3D, mock-ups that are very realistic, right? And use them for your website, use them to build your brand, use them to, you can literally make a website from, from thin air. You know what I'm saying? Like you can make a brand today for probably less than two grand out of thin air, just by thinking of different, you know, digital assets that you can put on the site, right? Of course, there's gonna become a point where you're probably gonna need to do photo shoots, you're gonna need to do video shoots, you're gonna need to do some stuff that's actually in real life, actual physical assets, right? You're, you're gonna have to do it at some point, right? But if you're just starting out and you, let's say you don't have the money to order all these samples and order all this other crazy shit, what you can do is you can get 3D renders made, okay? Especially for companies that are like food related, stuff like that, you can do a lot of um, digital assets, right? So that's a really easy way to get started, right? Renders are usually costing us anywhere from, I'd say 50 to, sixty dollars sometimes even less it really just depends it's they're, they're not super expensive versus a video shoot and a photo shoot that might cost you 500 bucks just for one shoot right um ux ui does website design so ux ui just means user experience user i forget what i means user interactiveness um this is the person that's designing your website right He's not the coder, the coder is gonna be in the engineering part. This is just the person that's designing your site. So again, when you're designing the site, try to give him as much to work with. Give him fonts, give him aesthetics, give him imagery, give him uh, competitors' websites, give him even just websites that you like the vibe of. They don't have to technically be in the same competitor, same niche. Just give him some vibes to go off of, right? UX, UI designers right now, I'd say we're aiming to pay somewhere around 350 to I'd say like, 450 for a full website. Full website means homepage with like six, seven sections. Each section is like a different part, you know what I'm saying, of the website. Um, a product page, a collections page, a cart page, um, a contact page, um, a sticky add to cart, a banner, a cart, uh, a pop out cart. And then I think that's, I think that's it. Yeah, somewhere around there. So if just for someone to make that website, I'd say aim for around $350. I'd say it's good. You can find people that are cheaper, that are less. I mean, I've had people build out websites for like 150 bucks. UX, UI design, not code websites. Again, just designing the websites, you know? But I'd say for someone that's good, that's gonna give you a good job and a full website with all those pages that I mentioned for e-commerce, say around 350, 400, you know? You can even go up to maybe 500, but I wouldn't pay more than 500 to be honest. And again, the advantage of going and hiring all these freelancers is that you're gonna be paying them directly instead of going through a creative agency. Because as a creative agency, 
to be honest, to make you a website, I'm going to charge you probably 10 K right. And it's going to cost me maybe $2,000, right? Because I'm putting my tax on it. So you either invest your time or you invest your money. If you want to pay me money to, for you, for me to build you a site, sure. I'll gladly take your money and put $8,000 on top of it for myself. Um, touch points. Okay. So branding comes down to touch points. You know, how can you get in contact with your customers, whether that's throwing events, um, funny and educating brand content, just anything, any, any multiple types of touch points, you know, like even inside of our packages, we're putting, um, you know, custom boxes, custom stickers, you know, custom inserts, right? St stuff that's going to just add that little extra oomph to your brand, right? When somebody sees your brand, they're going to be like, oh, wow, this is actually really, uh, you know, they, they, they took a little bit of extra time to put these stickers inside of here. Stickers are fucking cheap, cheap as hell. One of the cheapest ways that you can add some extra value. But at the end of the day, guys, it's all about adding that little extra touch, you know, whether that's tissue paper, whether that's custom stickers, whether that's custom inserts, right? And if you want to get custom boxes, stickers, and inserts really cheap, uh, what I use is Next Day Flyers. Use code DOM. Just kidding. <laughs> uh, I, yeah, I recommend using next day flyers. Um, you can get really low minimums, like a hundred stickers. And obviously it's going to be more expensive than buying a thousand stickers. But if you're buying a thousand stickers, just go directly to China. It's going to be way easier, way cheaper. Um, so yeah, just the more little touch points, the more little fun things you can have people interact with your brand with, you know, even building an app for your brand. And that's what I've been talking to someone about, about building an app to have more people interact with the brand, right? more touch points, the more people are going to interact with your brand. Okay. Customer reviews slash product surveys. Okay. This is a good way to get the brand out there more and just build more brand loyalty, right? Is by getting people's reviews. What do they genuinely think about the product? You're not going to get better at creating your products. If you don't know what people want, if you don't know what people are reacting to it. Right. So really learn the ins and outs of your customer or learn it down to a T. I want to get inside the customer's mind. I want to get inside the customer. No homo. <laughs> so yeah, the more you can learn about your customer, the better. Okay. As seen on press and pub. Yeah. You know, if you get, get press, get publications, that's going to help your brand. It's going to make you look more legit, especially if you're on publications. Um, if you can't do it naturally by doing some crazy shit, like the Tesla stunt got me in a bunch of publications for free, which is awesome, right? But if you can't do it, you can just pay. There's there's a bunch of press services out there. You know, like people think, oh my God, he got on Forbes. He must be so good. No, he just paid $3,000 to get on Forbes. So everything is paid to play nowadays. If you have the money, if you have the budget, you can get on there. Trust me, billboard, Times Square, all that shit. Okay. Buying templates for assets saves time and money. Yeah. So if, if you need assets for, let's say, let's say you don't want to spend that, spend the money that $350 to make your website, or whatever you can get a template. There's Shopify templates out there that are a hundred bucks. Sure. It still costs money. You know, there's free templates out there too. You know what I'm saying? So just take the time to go out there and investigate. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm speaking from the point where I like to have all my websites customly branded and made because I'm just that type of motherfucker and I have the money for it, right? But if you're just starting out with, you don't have to reinvent the cycle, right? Find some premium templates that are 100 bucks that look sick, right? Take some custom photography, get some renders for it. Great, it's done, it's amazing, right? You'd be surprised, there's a lot of websites that use fucking the basic ass templates and they just put their own photography and photos on it and it looks great and it looks awesome. They don't change the text, they don't change the fonts, they don't change anything and they're making a million dollars a month, right? So this is me just speaking from being a fucking nerd and liking my stuff to be custom, but you don't have to have it custom, okay? You can use templates. That's for everything. You can use templates for even stories. I've seen if, if you wanna make nice branded stories of your products, you can literally find stories the, like story templates for your products where you can change the text, change the images and boom. Now you have 50 stories to post about your brand. Okay. Very easy way. Loyalty program. Okay. Uh, give me your customer some type of loyalty, you know, some type of points. If they keep coming back and buying stuff, here's, you know, you ever get those coupons? Like when I, when I used to go to Panda Express, I would get these little stamp cards and you know, like a, the eighth time that you would come in, you would get like a free, free meal or something free orange chicken. Right. So loyalty programs, you know, the more people come back, especially again, if you have that return rate of customers, if you want to get that return rate higher, having some type of loyalty program makes a lot of sense. Okay. Uh, yeah. Boxes, custom stuff, just more touch points, custom miler bags. Again, another great thing when you're shipping out your packages, instead of shipping out with normal fucking basic packaging, that's just, you know, this dirty, disgusting mailer, 
you can put custom prints on it, you know, with the brand name, with the brand Instagram, right? That way when people get the package, like it looks way better. I mean, think about Amazon. When your Amazon package comes in, it comes in an Amazon box. It's branded, you know? Oh my God, I got my Amazon package, right? Most brands don't do this, you know what I'm saying? Because it just, it just costs a little bit of extra money. But again, custom boxes, stickers, inserts, Mylar bags, guys, this is maybe, it'll maybe cost you two extra dollars, maybe three extra dollars on top of, on, on top of your product, depending on your margins. If your margins are $2 then yeah, maybe it's not worth it. But if your margins are 50 bucks, what's an extra $3 to build your brand equity to make customers like you a lot more. I would spend that money any day. I would honestly spend $10 because I know if I have a good presentation, people are going to come back. Think about it. You walk into a luxury store, Gucci, Louis Vuitton, whatever it is. Think about when you buy it. Think about the, the, the vibe that it gives off. Think about the packaging, the custom printed tissue paper, you know, the stickers, the smell, the aromas, the custom leather hand printed bags, the little wiping things to clean the glasses off, the case, the little spray that comes into it, the, the thickness of the glass bottle. Think about all that stuff. In real, in realistically, it doesn't cost that much. But for some reason, in the, in the customer's mind, they think, oh my God, this brand is so luxury. Luxury? Luxury? That should cost them $15 to make, and they're charging $1,500 to make luxury. That's not fucking luxury. But again, think about if they spent $0 on all that extra fluff and all that extra bullshit, you would be like, you know, this brand's not really that luxury. I mean, like, they don't even have custom hand towels to clean my glasses with, you know? <laughs> so all that extra stuff doesn't cost that much money, right? And again, it depends. If, you're, if you have very low margins, don't do it. If you're doing a luxury brand, this is a must be. You for sure have to do it because if you don't, nobody's gonna think your shit's luxury, okay? Some boof ass shit. All right, customer service. So customer service solving problems that customers are having and building future report, okay? So this is a big thing. Once you start getting orders, you know, your marketing's good. You're bringing people into your website, right? This is how you're gonna get customers to return. This is how you're going to get customers to tell your friends. And this is how you're going to get free marketing. Because if you have good customer service and you, if you take care of your people, your people will take care of you and spread the message of your brand. Okay. So how do you do this? Email management, email support, right? Now for all of these, uh, you can hire different types of people for it. Usually we have VAs doing this type of stuff. Um, virtual assistants, you can get them on Fiverr, Upwork from the Philippines, usually fairly, fairly cheaply from around, you know, anywhere from $3 an hour to $15 an hour, depending on what kind of stuff they're doing. Um, again, if you're just starting out with, there's usually a lot of people that you can find for $5 an hour, $4 an hour, that'll do a really good job. But again, when you're hiring people that are less expensive, most of the time you're gonna have to train them a little bit on how to do those certain jobs, right? If they already have a lot of experience in those jobs, chances are that they're gonna charge a little bit higher because they do have more experience. So again, if you wanna hire people that are cheaper, you're probably gonna have to do a lot more uh, training. You know what I'm saying? You're gonna have to train them a lot more. You're gonna have to explain a lot more. If you wanna hire more expensive people, chances are you're not gonna have to train them as much and tell them as much, um, but it is gonna cost you more. So it's just the time versus money analysis, right? If you wanna spend more of your time and less money, do it this way. If you want to spend more money and have less time of managing these people, hire someone a little bit better. Okay. Email managing, that just means replying to people, replying to emails, you know, customer complaints, shipping orders, uh, disputes, all that type of stuff, right? Having your uh, sales rep or your VA go inside of Shopify, having them change the orders, refund orders, change addresses, all that type of stuff. Okay. Live chat management. Okay. So we incorporated this into our website about like two months ago. Um, this is just like a little window that pops up where somebody can go and chat with someone, right? So we have someone right now from nine to five on there answering questions, talking to people. If somebody goes in there and has a question, hey, uh, what does this have? What does that have, right? They can live chat with someone on there, right? I would say it, it depends how, how many people you're getting. Let's say you're paying someone five bucks an hour. They're on there from nine to five. That's 10, 11, 12, one, two, three, four, five. Yes, Dom knows how to count. That's eight hours times five bucks. That's $40 a day, right? So again, if you're not having a lot of orders, that $40 a day maybe doesn't make sense, right? But if you have a good amount of orders, that $40 a day can really help uh, answer a lot of questions, you know? And if you want even less hours, you can do four hours, right? 20, 20 bucks a day just to keep everything good. And again, it's not like somebody's going to be chatting live all the time. You know, there might be a person every 20 minutes that goes on there and wants to live chat, right? So it's not necessarily 
that it's their person is going to be bombarded with people, right? The bigger your company is, the more customers there is, the more live chat VAs you might need. You might need five people chatting at one time because you have so many people asking questions. But at that point, I would say um, work on those automations, right? Because chances are people are not over there asking you know, if they're all asking what's the tracking, what's the shipping, you can automate that. You can have people go to a landing page and track their orders, right? There's no need for someone to live chat and tell them their orders and tracking, okay? Customer upsells via chat. So if somebody's in the chat, you know, and they had a good time, or if they're just, you know, wondering about their order, like, should I order this? Should I order that? Especially with, like, products that are more geared towards a specific type of person, like, let's say, for example, uh, cosmetics. You know, sometimes girls, they have a certain problem where their skin is a little bit different. Everyone's skin is different than other people's skin, right? So they might have something particular that they need help with. So you can upsell them certain things in the chats, right? Hey, I, you know, uh, we're glad that you like our products. How did you like it? Oh, it was good, but I still have problems with my lashes not doing this and that. Okay, well, you should try our so-and-so so item, you know what I mean? So you can upsell them in the chats. Really good way to, you know, also, you know, think about it. If you can if you can upsell one a customer one thing that basically pays for your whole day of um, live chat management, you know, if you're paying someone $40 a day to answer emails and chat, if you can upsell a customer and sell one item and you make $40 from it, you pay for your employee cost, you know, or two items, whatever it is. Outbound customer relationship building, texting, etc. right? So this is something that I tried. I honestly didn't really uh, go through it with so much, but an idea is, you know, you, you can download a list of your top, you know, 10% of customers, let's say people that have spent over a hundred dollars with your brand. And what I like to do is I like to send them a personal text. You know, I have, a, I don't use my main phone, obviously my main phone number, but I do end up using like a burner phone number or something like that. There's also apps to do this. Um, I just like texting them from the phone cause it was a lot easier for me to communicate with people. And it feels a lot more personal, especially when they're getting that blue iMessage button. Right. So, uh, just texting them being like, hey, Charles, thank you for ordering, you know, with Gassy. We really appreciate you. Is there anything that we can do to better, you know, make our brand better, to better help you, right? Because a lot of times the customers will also tell you, uh, I didn't really like this. Or like, hey, can you guys have a flavor like this? Like, hey, I really like vapes. Or like, hey, I really like this. Uh, this cosmetics thing, it kind of was moldy when it came in. Can you guys send me another one, right? You'll learn, actually, you'll learn a lot about your company too and your downsides from texting customers, right? So... Don't text them at fucking, t you know, 2 a.m. at night, but um, it's, a, it's a good way to get customer feedback as well, okay? Wholesale sponsorships forwarding to operations. So a lot of times I'm not on the email, right? So um, our customer support VA team will send us, like, you know, if we get uh, somebody that wants to buy wholesale or a sponsorship opportunity, hey, we would love to have, you know, your product at our event, they'll forward it to the operations team, right? So that way they're communicating any big emails to us, you know? Again, someone that's a manager, maybe an operations manager, a project manager, they can be looking through the email as well, looking for this stuff, or you yourself as the company owner, as a CEO, you'll be looking through your email, right? But once you get to the point of there's fucking 20 things to do in a day, you might not be looking at the email all the time, okay? Getting customer reviews for products. And again, you know, texting people, talking to them on the chat, doing the emails, you can always, you know, the more customer reviews you have on your website, the better, the more social proof you have, the better, right? So collect those customer reviews. Um, if someone's had a good experience with your product, ask them to leave a review. And if they had a bad experience with your product, ask how you can make their experience better, you know? Have them leave a review too, you know? you don't want all positive reviews. It's, it's good to have some negative reviews because <laughs> if people go to your website and they see, oh my God, it's all positive reviews, like, you know, maybe it looks a little bit scammy. So try to have a good balance of both, you know. Go to different homes. Okay, 
Um, executive assistant. So this is this is not your. Okay, so executive assistant. So this is not your VA team. This is not like the kind of like lower end uh, people. It's more so, I guess, the higher tier operations, you know, the inner circle of your business, right? So um, it's gonna be someone that you can trust, someone that you can build on your team. Uh, they're gonna be most of the times for us like doing our accounting sheets, you know, uh, doing logistics support. So fixing errors, you know, with orders, right? It's just like, you know, talking, it, they're more so just like an extra hand on your team. It's like your, you know, your second there, your third man in your business, I guess you could say, you know, so they're not technically your business partners, but there's someone that's on your team that helps you. That's like your, you know, higher up assistant, right? And sometimes these roles are interchangeable. Sometimes it might be your partner that's your, that's your ex uh, executive assistant, right? Sometimes it might be your project manager, your product manager that is your executive assistant, you know, so all the roles are kind of interchangeable. Um, but again, this is just someone that's going to help you doing your little everyday tasks, right? Whether it's filing some papers or let's say you need to, you know, do your LLC formations again, or you need to pay some taxes or you need to pay uh, employees or freelancers um, or you need to schedule a call with uh, someone or whatever it is, you know. Scheduling calls with influencers, right? A lot of the times we we need help. Uh, I don't get on the calls with influencers myself, but I have my executive assistant get on the calls with our influencers, right? That way she can talk to them, get them locked in for our affiliate deals. Uh, hell, yeah, helping with inner circle operations, just anything in that realm, just helping us, you know? Communicating with us, communicating with the project manager, just any any type of extra tasks, extra stuff that we need help with. Like I mentioned before, you have 20 tasks in a day and there might be little 10 minute tasks, it's gonna add up. So having that project manager, that executive assistant is gonna help out a lot. Influencer relations. So this is, I guess this could be the same person that's in your marketing department, but we like to have a separate department for it just because it's kind of a job in itself. So this person's job is gonna be to manage all of the creators that are pushing your brand, right? the UGC creator management. So um, their job is gonna be to communicate with them to make sure that they're posting content, to make sure that packages are getting sent out, to make sure that we're always getting new people promoting our brand and getting new influencers on board, right? Again, this isn't necessary. You know, you can do really well with having, um, you know, just running Facebook ads, running TikTok ads. But also the good thing is, is once you get to a certain point, like that we're at now, we don't want to be spending our time making content, making marketing content all the time, right? Instead, what we can do is we can pay influencers to make that type of content. And I'm not talking about huge influencers with millions and millions of followers. I'm talking about micro influencers, people with 100K on TikTok, right? Um, rates for these UGC creators, it really depends. We've had people that we pay $500 for 30 videos. We had people that we pay five thousand dollars for 30 videos you know what i'm saying it really just depends on the type of content that they're putting out there right but the idea is the purpose of them creating this content is for you to reuse it on your own social pages right posting to your own social platforms or to use as advertisements right so the whole point is if you can take these creators videos and run it as an ad and drive sales then it's worth it you know think about it you pay someone $200 to make you a video. I mean, it seems kind of expensive, but imagine if that video is really good and that ad generates $20,000 for you, right? Was it $200 worth it? I would say it was pretty worth it, right? Now, on the other hand, if somebody charges you $200 for a video and the video shit and it you can't use it for your own socials and you can't even really use it as an ad, then you're probably wasting money. That $200 could go somewhere else way better, you know? So, Again, the person in charge of influencer relations is gonna be posting on the social media, posting on the stories, reels, TikTok. They're probably gonna be taking that UGC creator content. They're gonna be taking that content and they're gonna be re-uploading it. Sometimes also the influencer relationships person might be creating content for the brand itself, right? Most of the time when I see companies hiring like a social media marketing manager, they're the ones making the content themselves and posting it to the social medias themselves. But I would say if you have the budget for it, hire other people because that way you can have one person managing 10 creators. Let's say 10 creators make three videos every single week. That's 30 videos. That's 120 videos a month that you're gonna be, is my math right? Three times 10, 30, 
120. Yes, I'm still smart. So you can, you can have 120 pieces of content to upload to your social media instead of, I mean, the social media manager, maybe they could probably do 120 videos too. But what I'm saying is you're going to have different people, different aesthetics, different lifestyles, different editing styles. You know, you're going to have a lot more options to choose from. Especially when you're starting a brand, you don't know exactly what the strategy that's going to work the best is. You can try out a bunch of different stuff, right? Social media, media presence, engaging, interacting. So again, just answering people's DMs, you know, technically you can have a VA do this, but if your social media person is there and they're good for the job, I would have them do this, you know, engaging with people, interacting, liking comments, you know, upvoting stuff, um, just keeping the social media presence alive, you know, reposting stuff, tagging people, um, just making sure that the social media is in good standing. Okay. Influencer boxes. Uh, so again, contacting influencers, sending them out PR packages, sending them out boxes. Um, I would say when sending out these types of boxes, right? If you're sending it to influencers, we usually don't ask for posts. We like to send people stuff if they like it enough that they want to post it. Great. Fantastic. But again, we're probably not going to be sending out influencer boxes to people that have 10 K. Well, if we're sending out free products, it's mostly to people that have at least some type of following because we know that it's going to be worth it. Um, UGC creators are different because we make a deal with them beforehand. We tell them, hey, we're going to send you products. You need to make X amount of videos and we're going to pay you X amount of dollars, right? Influencer boxes are different. You're kind of just sending them out. You know, we send them out in, in terms of like, hey, we know that this, we're just sending this out. It's going to cost us 10 bucks of products to send them out. If they post it, great. If they don't post it, it's all good. It's really a numbers game at the end of the day. Let's say each influencer box costs you $10 to ship and package and send out. With the products inside of it, you send it to... 100 people, that's, um, what is that, a thousand bucks? It's Dom's math, right? What did I say? I don't know. I'm losing my mind over here, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, well, yeah, we'll say you send it to 100 people, right? It costs you a thousand bucks to send out those packages, right? Let's say one person posts and they bring you $500 in sales. It's pretty good. You already made half your money back, right? Let's say you have three people post and you make a thousand dollars from them posting. Those three people just paid for the 97 people that you sent stuff to and that didn't post, you know? Again, depends on your margins, depends on where your money's at, but that's how we like to look at influencer boxes. A lot, of, it's it's really just money that you're putting in to build your brand and your brand awareness, you know? It's not always gonna relate to sales right away because most people might not post it, but let's say an influencer posts it on their story and another big influencer sees it and now they wanna work with you or now they want your products, right? I've seen this happen countless of times of clothing brands where, you know, somebody will give someone, they'll give a piece of clothing to a rapper's, you know, best friend and next thing you know, that big rapper starts wearing that brand because they saw their best friend wearing it. You know, it's just, they like, they like, they like it on their homie. They think it looks dope. So they hit up the company, you know? So it's not always about going directly to the source. Sometimes it's better to hit up influencers, smaller friends or hit up um, celebrity, smaller friends and get it on them because chances are, if it's dope, if your product's sick, the bigger people are going to want to rock it, rock it too. You know, they're going to hit you up for it. Okay. Um, and last we have engineering, right? So engine, the engineering department, this is kind of the, uh, the coders for your website, the people that are actually coding, you know, using Java, CSS, all of that to make your websites. Um, UX, UI design, again, is the person that's actually designing your website. And the engineer is the person that's coding the website. Coding tends to be more expensive than the actual graphics of the website. It just takes more time, right? So roughly, I'd say if you're working on a custom website with all those pages that I mentioned before, you know, those seven, eight pages, right? With multiple sections, it's usually going to cost us around like $1,500, right? So we'll say you build, you have your UX UI for $350, it costs $1,500 to put it together. You're looking at around $2,000, you know? you throw in renders and other stuff, you're probably at 2,500. So again, if you're just starting out and you, you don't have $2,500 to make your custom website with custom everything, packaging and landers and all this stuff, use a template, okay? Keep it simple. If you're just starting out with, use a free template, study the game, study some videos, learn about how to increase your conversion rates, right? But if you have the money for it, of course, get a custom coder because a custom website is always gonna be you know, it's going to be your own little baby instead of copying someone's template. But nowadays, customers don't know. It's not like I go on a website and I'm like, hmm, that's that template. Well, maybe I do know because I know a lot of these Shopify templates. But for your everyday person, they're not going to go in there and be like, I've seen this template before. This brand's not legit. If, if you make your website look cool and clean, no one's going to notice. No one's going to care. Okay. 
also having an engineer is good just for bug fixes, you know? So even if you are using a template, sometimes these templates have bugs from the updates and other shit. So, or let's say you want something custom, right? Like I want a uh, custom pop-up to come up or I want like a sticky add to cart or I want some like hovering glowing button that's, you know, I can't find an app on the Shopify app store for. What you can do is you can have someone go in there and code it. So a lot of times, even when I was starting out before, I would use templates and I would want something specific like, hey, I wanted this, but I wouldn't know how to do it because I don't fucking know how to code. So I would need to get an engineer to do it. And a lot of times that's cheaper. You know, if, if you're just having them fix bugs or if you're having them add little gadgets or, or gizmos, it's, it's going to cost you a few hundred bucks, not, not a few thousand, right? New landing pages, you know, whenever we want to try out new offers, let's say we want to do buy two, this, get two free or like, um, every purchase, every next hundred purchases comes with a free blah, blah, blah. You know, you can have people build you custom landing pages just for those, you know, exclusive offers, right? So again, that's where a good engineer comes in. That's where a good uh, coder comes in. Um, but again, this is more advanced level stuff. This is what we're kind of doing. If you're starting out with, keep it simple. Don't reinvent the cycle. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, that sums it up for our masterclass mastermind. Uh, this kind of gave you an, an overall understanding of all the different aspects of our business, of the e-commerce business. If you guys have any questions, again, drop it below. You can message me on all, on all my socials, Dominicus on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok is still banned, but it's not like you can DM me on there anyways. Um, so go ahead and hit me up on Instagram. That's where I'm going to be most available. Um, the description has the discord as well. If you want to join the community with a bunch of like-minded people, all learning e-commerce, all learning online businesses, all hustling to get to the bag, you can go ahead and check that out too. Um, yeah, I mean, this was, this was an overall synopsis kind of talking about all these different sectors, right? A lot of them are more in depth and more advanced levels, but I wanted to get, you know, hit the basics, but I also wanted to get a little bit more advanced for everyone that was wondering what those different aspects mean. Okay. And again, like I said, this is just all my personal knowledge, all my personal preference. There might be shit that I misspoke on. There might be shit that I don't know, but this is what I know. This is what I do on my day-to-day -day basis. I hope it helped you guys. I hope it helped you understand the mind of Dom and the mind of how to make a multi-million dollar business. Okay. So appreciate it guys. Thank you for tuning in. Um, chat. If you have any questions, let me know. I'm going to be answering them after the stream and I'll uh, see you guys next time. Shit.